Hi, it's just a quick overview of the DDC420 controller hardware. Um, obviously you've got the technical literature to run through, but this is just a quick um, physical look at the controller, so you get a bit of an appreciation of what's going to be inside the box uh, as a physical beast. Um, just some key things that um, you need to be aware of. The controller has lots of air vents. Um, the controller does push out a little bit of heat when it's mounted inside of a cabinet. These vents are top and bottom. Um, there are natural, uh, natural place for nasty little things to get into the controller, such as swarf or any uh, cable cuttings that may be um, flying around the control cabinet or inside any trunking which runs above the controller. So. Please be careful when you're uh, constructing the control cabinet that uh, you cover the vents should the controller be uh, already mounted inside the, inside the control panel. Um, the terminal blocks, they're all removable. You can see that the, the, the main uh, terminal block is already taken out on this, uh, on this example. All the terminal blocks have got numbers on them. This allows you to remove them and take them out. Um, out of the way if you're going to remove the controller during any uh, drilling works or whatever so you can match the terminal blocks to the terminal numbers which are clearly shown on the controller housing okay so uh, just a quick overview of the user interface we've got three buttons on the left hand side we've got two LEDs one showing for a manual condition one for uh, malfunction messages the information button you can press and it will display um, all of the controller settings and it will also allow the user to view the current status of all the inputs and outputs. Um, that will be the inputs and outputs connected onto the controller and also remote inputs and outputs from the field bus connection or the field bus modules which are connected uh, on, a, on a data connection. Um, the malfunction messages can be viewed by pressing the malfunction message button and then you can use the select key to uh, acknowledge the message or delete the message as, as the case may be. The um, third button is a user configurable button so we, when we construct the software um, in PS4000 we can decide what the function of this button will be. Some examples would be a time extension feature or um, a initialize a boiler service mode or we could even acknowledge all the alarm messages or delete the alarm messages one function for that button only and when you press the button we can display some text as to the status of what's actually happening so we can say for example push this button for service mode push this button to extend time etc etc Okay, the select button obviously says what it means on the tin. It uh, you you choose the parameter you're interested in, and you select the button to to progress. Alternatively, you can press the wheel button to um, enter values and sh and change values. The majority of all the user access is by turning the wheel and pressing the set button. You can press the escape button to move backwards out of the menu trees that you you've you've accessed. Um, and uh, get your, get yourself around the menu system. Okay, so um, the user interface also has a removable plastic cover and with a screwdriver you can actually take the top cover off and this will reveal a small battery underneath the cover which is responsible for holding the time and date of the controller. This should not need repair, replacing for at least um, eight to ten years of the controller being in service. Okay, so I'll just click that cover back on and put the clear plastic cover back up, back in place. Okay, so in terms of the terminal blocks, as I said, they're already removable; they're all numbered. Uh, we have terminal numbers and pin numbers. So, for example, here, pin number one, terminal thirteen; pin number two, terminal fourteen. We have multiple grounding points also, in this case pins 15 and 18, and on the bottom of the controller we have 33, 36, but also we have some 28 and 30. So why so many ground connections? Well this is all related to the universal pins, which are pin number 1 to 8. 
Now, these pins can be used for digital inputs, digital outputs, analog inputs and analog outputs. So you must observe the correct grounding point depending upon what the pin is being used for. So for example, if it's a temperature sensor input, as in a passive sensor, such as a, a, an NI1000 or a PT1000 or a KP10 sensor, you would use the ground connection of 15 or 33. If it was an actuator connection, where you need the 0 to 10 volt output from an active pin, and then the 0 volt connection would either come in onto terminal 18 or terminal 36. You can see that on the data sheet, so please observe that, otherwise you may get some uh, uh, unexpected performance from your equipment, or sensors may oscillate, or something of that kind. So we have five digital inputs, they're all relays, uh, relay uh, in inside the controller hardware, which are rated to 5 amps. So there are pins 11, 12, 13, 14 and 15. We also have two digital inputs on pin numbers 9 and 10, 27 and uh, 29 terminal numbers. And we have eight universal points. As I said, they're analog input, analog output, digital in or digital out. If they are digital output points, then they are triacs. So they switch zero volts, and that's a zero volt um, connection, uh, zero volt DC. So we connect the live 24 volt to a 24 volt DC coil, and we switch the zero volts out of, say, pin five or pin six, um, in terms of completing the circuit and driving the relay. There are um, some bus connections. We've, I've mentioned CAN bus. Um, we've got an RS-485 bus, which is for MSTP BACnet. And we've also got um, some RS-232 connections if we wanted to have something like a GSM modem to send text messages. Um, other than that, we have the Ethernet connection, which um, is at the bottom of the controller. So when you're mounting the controller, please allow enough room for the Ethernet cable to be inserted and withdrawn for service purposes. Uh, I think that's about it, so um, if you want to have some more information, please look at the technical literature. Thank you very much.